Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. Matthew chapter 15 verse 13 But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Matthew chapter 7 verse 19 Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Genesis chapter 6 And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Currently in the world today, some are questioning the ethical movement of the pharmaceutical industry. This has led me to do some historical research. In 1932, a syphilis study was conducted on 600 African-American men, known as the Tuskegee Experiment. They were promised free medical care in order to study the full progression of the disease. The US Public Health Service doctors who ran the study informed the men that they were being treated for bad blood, a common term used at that time referring to various illnesses. They were provided with placebos like aspirin and mineral supplements, although penicillin became the suitable treatment for syphilis in 1947. Treatment was withheld from the participants and the study continued. The men died, became blind, insane, and experienced other health issues due to untreated syphilis. Peter Buxton, a public health service venereal disease investigator, brought his concerns to his seniors as unethical, but the study continued until all participants died. Autopsies were made for analyses of data, and Mr. Buxton leaked this to reporters and the public were made aware, causing outrage and forcing the study to close. 28 participants died from syphilis, 100 died from related complications, around 40 spouses were diagnosed with the disease, passing on to 19 children at birth. Congressional hearings began in 1973. Following this, out-of-court settlements were made. Understandably, many African Americans developed mistrust of the public health officials and vaccines, which has led me to believe that we too should question what ingredients are in vaccines and their efficacy, as anyone taking them should be made aware of the possible long-term side effects, if any, and that there should be relevant information provided along with informed consent. In the 1960s, and 1970s, the US Indian Health Service and joint physicians performed forced sterilization on Native American women. 3,406 Native American women were sterilized from 1973 to 1976, which occurred in at least four of the 12 Indian Health Service regions, and in many cases without informed consent of their patients. The women were led to believe that sterilization was reversible. There were cases where the procedure was carried out on young children aged 11 years. The main factor was to recommend sterilization to poor and minority women. This included Puerto Ricans, African Americans, and Chicanos, although they had not recommended this to wealthier Caucasian patients. Abuse had been documented where healthcare providers did not inform women that they would be sterilized 
or they were coerced into it by threat of welfare removal and health care. Investigations by the General Accountability Office began in 1976, which found that four Indian Health Service areas did not adhere to Indian Health Service policies regulating consent to sterilization. This was later deemed a human rights violation committed against Native American women. Why have I brought this to your attention? I felt the need to inform the listener of various instances in the past where clear denial of patient consent and information were met. Learning from the past is important as our civil rights as individuals should be revisited when confronted with healthcare solutions that affect our well-being and whether there are human rights violations. It is important to know what is being promoted or offered, what is in our medicines or vaccines, are they safe and what are the implications? Exercise choice and the necessity for informed consent. These are our fundamental rights which need to be addressed and whether discriminations will arise from our healthcare choices. I have provided links in the description area for further research. God bless.